What's going on YouTube? Prepared Wanderer out in the woods today. And this is the next in the Prepared Citizen series. I'm going to be talking about a patrol pack that I've been building this winter. And I'm finally getting out here in the woods. I'm going to start using it a little bit. And this is what I consider probably one of the best military surplus packs on the market today, if you can find them. So stick around. So it has been just a crazy winter. Uh, temperatures up and down, lots of lots of freezing rain and storms. And one day it's 50 degrees, and the next day it's it's below zero. So spring is starting to finally come around here in Ohio, and I wanted to get out and talk about uh, a patrol pack that I've been building this winter and putting together. Um, to go in this prepared citizen series. This is what I would consider a Minuteman uh, style pack. This would be a supplement to what you would be carrying on your person and what you would be carrying on your either your LBE or chest rig, just depending on what you use. Um, I've got a couple different setups I'm working on right now, an LBE and a chest rig both, to see what I like best. and. Um, you know, the pack is something I consider that you need to have um, to supplement that gear and to be more of the creature, com the creature comfort items that you need when you're out in the field. So just a brief uh, breakdown of what this all means. In the Minuteman situation, I really don't expect to be going out um, actively looking for a fight. Uh, I'm, what I'm envisioning happening is uh, when the grid goes down, when that when the peanut butter hits the fan, um, I'm going to be out scouting around um, areas that I know and seeing who's out there, what's out there, are there resources, and I don't want to engage in a fight. That's not what I'm looking to do. Um, I want to. I just want to gather information. So. I don't want to be carrying a gigantic bug out bag with, you know, 72 hours worth of gear. Um, I really want something that's lightweight, mobile, um, but that's going to provide me some comforts that I'm going to need to keep me warm, dry, fed, um, and just give me that extra gear that I can't carry on my, on my chest rig. So what we're going to look at today is this pack right here and this is the Marine Corps ILBE assault pack now these are no longer issued no longer made um, they are getting harder and harder to find on the secondary market I was very fortunate to get one of these um, uh, from a guy I know he sent it to me free of charge it was his in the Marine Corps I really appreciate that that was super nice of him but he had no use for it and he know he knows that I would get out and, and actually use it and so I've got a little piece of history with me here um, and why do I consider this probably one of the best assault packs on the market today it's uh, I think when we start looking at this thing um, it's gonna be pretty evident to you guys why it's so awesome I think it's it's highly regarded in a lot of circles um, so if you can get one of these, I highly recommend it. So what I want to do is I'm going to just kind of show you how I have it set up, and then we're going to get into the contents of it. I'll show you what I'm carrying, kind of talk about some of the things that I'm thinking about, and then actually kind of use it a little bit. So. All right, so the ILBE assault pack, I believe, was originally designed by Arteryx. And if you guys know backpacks and gear, they are a premium manufacturer and designer of really high speed uh, backpacking hiking gear very highly regarded in the industry so they would actually designed these for the military um, they made some of them but I believe the contract actually ended up with um, proper and proper started making these um, en masse for the, for the Marine Corps now what I've done with my pack is I've added two of the Molly military issue canteen carriers. These are the marine issue ones that come in Coyote. They fit perfectly on the side. This front panel is all molly and has one long zipper that accesses a very large pocket here for quick access. And on the 
front of mine, I've got a small admin pocket. I got this from Milspec Monkey. This is the small Molly admin that, that they sell. I've got my um, carabiner on here. Flipping it around, it has a very simple designed back. It's slick and smooth. So nothing to impede when you're slinging over um, a chest rig or armor or something like that. You'll be able to get that on and off pretty quickly. It does have a belt that is tucked in here, so you do have a waist belt. There are compression straps on the side. Of course, we've got padded shoulder straps with a sternum strap that is adjustable. It moves up and down, the strap right here. On the top here we have a port so you can run uh, comms from a radio or a hydration tube. And then the main pack, once again, is very simple. It is one big pocket with a hydration sleeve in the back. And then if you notice here, there are buckles so you can add straps to attach a hydration pad or a hydration bladder. Um, and back here in this pocket, this is the frame sheet. So there is a, a semi-rigid frame sheet that comes with these. If you're going to be looking for these, make sure it comes with that because this really helps with distributing the load and giving the, the pack some rigidity. Bottom of the pack. Uh, a drain hole, and that is it. So this bag is very simple in its setup. It is, it does not have a lot of extras, and that is purposefully designed for the task that it was designed for. Uh, you throw your gear in it. You don't need to organize a bunch of, have a bunch of little pockets and you know laptop sleeves and pen pockets like so many of the manufacturers that do assault packs today they add all this extra junk that you really don't need when you're in the field but none of that stuff matters you really need it to be simple you need to be durable and this bag uh, definitely checks all those boxes so what do i got in mind let's take a look all right so everything's laid out on this military casualty blanket uh you know the civilian equivalent is the grabber blanket that is reflective material on one side and OD green on the other. The reason I carry this is, is a couple reasons. One, my thinking is, and I've used this in the past actually, is that these make fantastic ground sheets um, when you're setting up a shelter and you're sleeping under a tarp or a poncho. You can sleep on top of these. Um, they also do double duty as a shelter themselves. You can actually use them as a tarp. Um, or uh, in a situation where you are losing body heat, you can wrap, it, wrap up in them and protect yourself from the elements and get a little bit of heat going. So it's a multi-purpose item that works extremely well. It's a very lightweight item and it's really essential, I think, um, in a lot of my kits that I build. I always have one of these blankets with me just because of that. Up here I have um, an Espit style stove. This is not the Espit, this is the BCB Dragonfire. This takes the Dragonfire gel fuel. I've done a review of this stove. These are fantastic. The reason I picked these types of stoves, Espit or this one, is because they have a very a uh, low smoke signature. You don't have a lot of smoke coming off of these things. You can cook on them very quickly. They heat up water fast. Um, they're relatively lightweight. Um, and in a pinch, you can add wood to these, twigs, sticks, to um, add to the fire if you need to. So we're going to set this up and actually use this, but I wanted to show that. That's how I heat up my water. Here, this is my kit that really has all of the little things uh, that I need to utilize. So 
I guess I would consider this a survival kit in, a, in one, re, one regard. I've got 550 cord for setting up a shelter. I've got duct tape, military uh, survival saw, wire saw, butane lighter, can opener, some live fire, which is another fire starting method. Here I've got a match case with a compass in it. Here is a razor blade. This is a mini saw. Fire bellows for starting a fire. And then a flashlight with a diffuser on it. Back here, I've got uh, some quick uh, little boo-boo items, first aid items. tablets and some whirl bags, um, a little plastic magnifying lens, and then one of these little um, metal survival cards that has some different uh, items on it for fishing and hunting. You can make little arrowheads out of it, so just some little, little items. And then also I've got some more fire starter. These are from black and white fire starter and these are a man-made uh, tinder they're kind of a an impregnated cotton ball with some wax and some accelerant in those so those go in the back here so this kit really is going to be all the essential items that I need here I've got a military style poncho so that's my shelter and it's also going to help protect me from rain I've got a small backup field knife. This is the Ezzy 3. One of my all time favorite knives. I've got that in a Kydex sheath set up for neck carry, and I've got a small pick lighter um, under some Ranger bands. Ranger bands, of course, can be used for a fire starter as well. Another Bic lighter and some. Burt's Bees for my lips. This goes in that little front admin pocket. That's kind of a quick grab and go item. Always have extra lighters. Got a small homemade ration pack. We're going to go through this in a little bit here in the video because I'm going to actually uh, cook my dinner out here. But I've got some ramen. There's some chicken. There's some pulled pork. There's some cliff bars. Uh, coffee. Creamer. Just different uh, beef jerky, just a, a lot of different little things. So if you don't want to use MREs, which can be very expensive and not that great, um, also very heavy, making your own little ration pack, I really think is the way to go. You can get this stuff pretty cheap at the grocery store and you can rotate it out and you don't feel bad about using it uh, when you're training uh, because you can replace it easily instead of having to order MREs, which are very expensive and not always fun to get. Of course, a good pair of gloves to protect my hands. My hands are really important to me. So I've got mechanics, mechanic wear gloves. Uh, these are the fast fit gloves, I believe they call these. They're just a very lightweight pair of gloves, but they have a leather, leather type or leather style palm. I don't know if that's actually leather, it may be, but you know, they definitely do the job protecting your hands. Over here I got my titanium canteen, canteen cup and lid. And then on this uh, pocket over here, this is my other canteen, that's just a Nalgene Oasis. Underneath that I have a sit pad that I've cut from a, a military sleeping pad. So that's a foam pad. That is something I can kneel on, sit on. I can fan the flames of a fire if I am gonna start a fire. Here I've got uh, baby wipes, baby butt wipes. Can use those on my hand and face and my bottom so that's nice you gotta definitely want to stay clean when you're out in the field um, and then this is a more extensive first aid kit here this is not a trauma kit per se but there is an h and h uh, compressed gauze uh, tape gauze pads gloves um, on my chest rig or my lbe i carry more of a blowout kit and a tourniquet so this is more 
uh, taking care of myself um, boo-boo type items and this is in a watertight bag this is an aloe sack if you haven't seen these before uh, they're a little bit better than a Ziploc. They seem to work pretty well for me. I haven't had too many issues with them over the years. Um, but you always want to check them. So the aloe sack or a lock sack, sometimes what they're called. And that is pretty much it. Yeah. Alright, first thing I gotta do is I gotta clear off this ground a little bit. There is a lot of debris from the fall and the winter make sure I'm safe had a lot of moisture but um, I'll go ahead and clear it anyway and give me room to, to cook I'm gonna be using the the BCB gel stove like I said I've done a review of this stove before um, and it's it's really nice because it, use, it uses these alcohol gel packs instead of the espit so if you don't like espit because of the smell these are a little bit more uh, more pleasant to work with they're self-contained they're more expensive um, but you can get them on amazon and other stores and then also this stove has a nice feature it has a little wind block that you can put in there so what you do is you open one of these up. Throw that in there. And you got this for trash, so we gotta contend with that. I'm gonna pack that out for sure. Let's put that aside. Get a, it's kind of hard to do this with the camera, so forgive me for fumbling around a little bit. All right, that's going. And once it gets going, you will know it. So put that in there, close that up. There's just a little bit of smoke, but it's not black smoke. I mean, it, it, it dissipates very quickly, um, and you're not going to really notice it from a distance. It's definitely not filming up into the sky, so you're really not alerting to anybody to your position, what you're doing out in the woods, um, which is good. water's boiling what I've got to put my stove in this is actually a piece of material that came off of an older pack ILD pack this is the, uh, the marine issue digital camo I just sewed a little pouch for it just did that by hand and ran a, some cord through it and then my stove fits in there nicely so it keeps my pack clean and then as far as Rations. I'll go through these a little bit. Got some ramen. This is some good ramen. This is the, the soy sauce flavored gold. I got a couple of different protein selections. I got white chicken. And then I've got pulled pork and barbecue sauce, which I'm kind of anxious to try that. I got this, I think I got this at, at Walmart. And then some beef sticks, jack links, and then I've got to have coffee. Um, 
definitely a slave to caffeine. Uh, but it coffee is such a morale booster when you're out in the field. So I got some black rifle coffee. I've also got uh, some chai spice black tea just for some variety. And then my all-time favorite field coffee is this uh, Copico brown coffee. This has the cream and the sugar built into it already. So you just throw that in the cup and add hot water and you've got cream and sugar coffee. Couple of protein bars, cliff bars. And then in here I've got hot sauce packets, soy sauce. Uh, those are always good to have. Don't really carry any extra salt uh, or sugar or any of that stuff uh, just because I've got the all in one coffees already, but certainly add those to it. It's always good to have just a variety of different items. You never know what you're going to eat. So. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pulled pork and barbecue sauce with the, the ramen. I'm going to mix those. I think that'll be pretty good. And then when I get back to my place, I can replenish this food um, so it's ready to go for the next time. Also carry this little mess kit. And here I've got a folding cup and a spork that came with it. So that gives me an option to eat out of this instead of out of my metal cup, which is hot. And then I also got a little tray so I can, you know, actually put a piece of meat on there if I need to. This is by Wildo. I believe this is a Swedish company. I think they make uh, some military stuff. So my first tab is already burned out while I was talking there. And the water's not at a boil yet. That fuel bubbling. Crazy, look at that. for some of this to my bowl. Really good. So I got all this trash. A little trick that I do put everything in the ramen bag so I don't tear it open. I leave it kind of intact so I can put stuff inside there. And I can put those gel fuel packs in there. And all my trash is in here. I can pack this out and get that to a safe place. Don't want to leave a lot of trash laying around because that's going to, of course going to be an indicator that I was in the area and it's just not what I want to do. So making sure you police your trash is really a, a great little tip. All right, 
right, so this is how I've got my, my patrol pack set up. And now you probably noticed I never used the term when I was associating with my stuff as an assault pack because I'm not in the assaulting uh, game. That is not what I'm, I'm trying to do. This is probably would be considered more um, survival. Um, but in a scenario that is not because you're lost, but because uh, you need to survive out in the field, um, away from modern comforts, and for a couple of days um, in a patrolling situation. And that's what this is all about. And that's what this pack is designed for. That's how I have it set up. And, um, and I want to reiterate again, as you're watching this video, not everything is in here because there are other things that are on my person and in my, my uh, chest rig. And those are going to be separate videos. And I want to do those all separately so I can give those each the time that they deserve. And then at the end of this whole series, you kind of put everything together and kind of see the journey that I've been taking of putting this gear together because... Thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for watching this series. Make sure you check out the links down below. Uh, to the affiliate links, to Amazon, to the Etsy store that sells the patches and the stickers. Uh, that helps support the channel, helps me go keep going doing this. Um, and look for more of these videos coming um, throughout the year. I'm going to be sprinkling them throughout. Um, doing other videos as well, doing bushcraft stuff and product reviews like you guys love. and uh, But also be adding this prepared citizen stuff in, in there intermixed. So. Alright guys, I'm going to load up, get out of here, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.